What's up, y'all? We are back out here at our newest spec home build. Remember, this is where we buy the dirt, we build the home, and we sell it after we're done building. And we have been killing it on structural steel. Last week, we got into it. We started and we made a bunch of progress, but as you can see, a bunch more has gone down. We're about 75% of the way done. We still have a little more to do, so let's get into what happened and what needs to happen for us to be able to finish structural steel and move on to frame. Last week, we got our big main beam in. Remember, this is where all the glass is at the back of our house, so the steel is gonna support the house loads above this. Then we have the plate steel. It's gonna act to shed water from the back, but it's also just a really cool detail that's gonna protrude inside the house and outside the house, and this is all gonna get painted. Now, we kinda ended with this other long beam, it's bolted on that side and welded on this side. This is one of the main supports that's gonna hold up the second story. Now, what has happened since then? Quite a bit, right? So, we have a cross beam here. This is an HSS, that's a big I-beam. And if you see, this large beam is carrying that load. And now you can actually see in this space, this is making up this atrium area. So why we have to have all this steel is so that we can look all the way up to our second story. So basically, this is our kitchen. Kitchen island will be like right here. Living room is over in this area. We have all of this glass that's gonna be below and above this steel beam. But then 20 feet up is gonna be the ceiling. So there'll be a catwalk upstairs. So if you look, this beam right here is making up, the top of it is going to be the floor of the catwalk. And what else we're gonna do is we're gonna get wooden trusses and they're gonna span from this beam to that beam, from this beam to another beam that's coming up. So we have multiple different areas that we need structural steel. Let me walk you from the front of the house all the way to the back and the purpose of each. Yo, John. John, wake up, man. You have a meeting in 10 minutes, bro. Wake up. What? Here. Take an end's pouch. Oh my God, dude, I got here early. I thought I was waiting on you guys, bro. Holy sh What time is it? Man, you, you have 10 minutes, man. You, you gotta wake up. Oh my God. You have a meeting right now. Woo! Let's go, baby! Where are we, where are we meeting? What are we doing? Just like that, I'm awake, I'm alert, and I'm prepping for my meeting. Now, in between getting prepped, let's talk about ENDS pouches. As you guys know, each pouch packed with 50 milligrams of caffeine per pouch. None of that energy drink garbage, artificial sweeteners, and more importantly, no nicotine. Head on over to nzepouches.com, put in promo code JGB at checkout, get 15% off. You can buy single cans at the gas station, but when you check out through the website, you're gonna get these six packs. You're gonna get 15% off, so go ahead, buy two or three of these things, because I promise you, once you try it, you're gonna be going through these things like it's candy. First off, let's start at the front of the home. We're gonna use some renderings to go along with this. If you look down here, we've had some concrete footers underneath grade that we put these steel base plates on. We went over all the steel base plates on the interior of the home. We have a steel base plate here and then a couple steel base plates over there. What this is going to do is there's gonna be a beam that spans this and that is gonna make up the front edge of our trellis. There's a trellis on the front of the house and a trellis on the back of the house. So we have a steel beam here, and then we have two by sixes in steel that will make up the slats of that trellis. But now, that's gonna connect in to a series of beams at the front of the house. The front of the house is all glass, right? So we have a base plate here and a base plate here. We're gonna get columns and another beam is gonna span all the way across this. And just like the back, we have some really cool plate steel details that are gonna protrude inside and outside of the home. But if you look at this big daddy right here, this mamma jamma 
is a 12 inch by 12 inch square. It's all hollow. And what the guys are gonna do is they're gonna use this nifty acetylene torch over here. What's awesome about this torch is if you notice, it has a track. Why we need that track is because we can't cut this by hand. It needs to be an exact cut, it needs to be perfectly straight. They're gonna install this track on the top of that hollow tube and we're gonna cut it in half, the top and the bottom. And what that's gonna give us is two C channels. Okay, and then we're gonna take those channels and we're gonna put them like this. And it's a really cool detail that they're actually gonna hide columns that are at the front of the house. So we put the C channel around it like this, but then there's this void in the front and we're gonna have plate steel on that. So it's gonna be these really cool chunky members of exposed steel that we're gonna have the trellis. This is essentially what's gonna happen. We're gonna take a C channel. There's gonna be one here and one here. So you're gonna have two C channels on this side. And then this section here is gonna get plate steel on it. So it's gonna just look like this big monolithic beam because you're gonna be able to see that beam from all sides where the windows intersect it. Then you have the C channel above. So it's gonna look just like this massive C channel is connecting like this kind of U shape, like a big horseshoe at the front and the rear of the home. And that is also gonna intersect with the really cool plate steel overhangs there. There's just so much stuff that is not gonna be hidden. This is going to be exposed. So that means our welds need to be really tight. All of our reveals need to be really tight. And we're getting this stuff in in space right now. We have no framing around it. We don't have our windows here yet, but we know the sizes of everything. This is why, again, it is so important to get your top of steel. That's the top cord of these I-beams and your bottom of steel. We need all of that exact on exactly where it's going. We need to know our exact spans. We need to know the build outs of the windows on the interiors of those jams, the thicknesses, the list goes on and on and on, but we're on top of it. And as you can see, we're making progress. Give me another week, week and a half. We're going to get in the frame and then this baby's going to be off to the races. Now, moving to the interior, we obviously have this main beam that's going to basically the stairs are back over there and they're going to wrap up to the second level and then remember this beam just got installed that's going to make up the system that holds our second level floor okay so all of this is going to have trusses and they're going to hang on all these different steel beams and then coming back through here i already talked about we have the back window set with these steel beams and then all of this gets windows around this corner as well. And obviously none of that glass can be structural, so it all has to be steel beams. But remember, we have that bottom steel plate that is on our massive beam. That's gonna also turn the corner. So there's a few things we need to line up here. The guys are gonna hoist that rectangle tube in the air, and then they are gonna actually weld that directly too, because these are two rectangle tubes meeting each other. And then the tricky part of this is we have to match up those steel plates exactly around that corner. But then just like the front, you can see it now. We are hanging this I-beam on to, from our steel beam, we're connecting it there, and then we have three columns over there. So those columns, if you come look, just like the front, we have a concrete footer that's all specced out from our engineer. We have our base plate on top, and then the columns get welded directly to that base plate. What I love about these is they're structural, right? They're holding up a large steel I-beam, but look at how cool they look. Three separate full round columns. And then between these two, we're gonna get the same trellis detail. So we're gonna put steel, and that's gonna give us some really nice kind of divided light to where you're gonna get some shadows and you'll get some coverage on the windows. But what I like about it is it's still gonna let in all the natural light into the house. So I talked about how we have a big beam in the front over that glass. That beam is sitting right here. And what we do is we order them a little long because if you remember from the last video, we're doing a lot of the fabrication of this in the field. So we order it, you know, a couple feet longer than we need and then we cut it all to size on site. But as you can tell, this structural steel package is pretty ridiculous. Um, and it's awesome. When you wanna see a really cool detail of like a huge vaulted ceiling or a really big open area, this is kind of what it takes, right? But then you have to think, not only 
you need structural like soundness, but we want this to look really cool. And a lot of these details, what we're doing now cannot be undone later, right? So they all have to be exact and they're all gonna be awesome but it takes so much freaking coordination and we've done all of that. Now we're gonna have another maybe week, week and a half left, get the structural steel done and then we can start our frame and that's where we're really gonna start moving. I just wanna talk a little bit more about some of these connection points. Now, right there, there's a knife plate. Remember, we talked about the knife plate on the other one. A knife plate is just a little bit of a flag. It's a tab that comes off of our main column. So here's our column and then the knife plate is gonna go right here. And we weld that plate on, it's perforated. And as you can see, that's a bolted connection. But now if you look on this side, this I-beam is resting on this larger I-beam. And if you look below and we through bolted through the bottom flange of that I-beam. So both the top flange of the one below and the bottom flange above, we drilled through and then we bolted that together. So that's a different type of connection. We have another knife plate and bolted connection over there. But if you look over here, these are actually welded connections. So we're using this tab. This is an angled, it's a 90, and we're welding the HSS, which is the I-beam, to this structural steel. It's a rectangle tube. So you can see in each of those sides, we have those angled brackets and we're welding all the way around that. Now I wanna show you another connection. This is where we have two rectangle tubes meeting each other. And then the engineer actually wanted us to just weld the actual tube to the tube instead of using those brackets. So there's all these different connection details. We have more. This is a square tube, a column, that's getting welded to our rectangle tube. And then if you look, we have an HSS, that's an I-beam sitting on top of the rectangle tube. And that connection is again, just a straight welded connection, beam to beam. There's no bolts on that one. And it makes sense because where are you gonna bolt it? If you're bolting I-beam to I-beam, you have that bottom flange to do it. But here, that connection is just easiest with a weld. My point in all of this is you don't just come on site and just put this stuff up willy-nilly. I just showed you about seven different connection details on one single project. Now imagine doing like a full office building. There will literally be thousands of different connection details because each different type of material needs to connect to different type of materials in different ways. Depending depending on what's bearing on top of it. There's so many different factors, but this is why we do shop drawings and this is why we send them off, get them checked and rechecked. And this cycle can take a long time, but I am telling you, do not rush that process. You have to get this stuff right because it will cost you 10 times more down the line to fix it. And sometimes you can just back yourself into a corner and you never want to do that.